Hello, would like to share an interesting incident which happened with me today morning. Rather than incident, I think it was a wonderful experience. A young girl, 10 years old, was noticing some pain in her leg since last 15 days. She reached out to her doctor in her native place where an x-ray was done and unfortunately so, this young kid was diagnosed as a bone cancer, osteogenic sarcoma. With that diagnosis, she came to Nasik at HCG Manavata Cancer Center and uh, it was my first consultation or first interaction with this young smart kid. While I was telling her parents that okay this is what she has, this girl I am sure at that age, at, that, at this tender age uh, did not realize the significance of the word cancer and she was least interested in trying to understand what she has to go through. Explaining her parents that she would first go through a certain battery of tests including PET scan, biopsy and probably she would go through chemotherapy first followed by surgery, again chemotherapy. So it's going to be a treatment for around six months. After I had uh, narrated the treatment related part to her parents, I just gazed at this at the girl and said, do you want to ask me anything? She says, will I be able to continue eating fish? Because I love it. And I said, why not? What made you ask that? She says, no, my grandma has been telling me now you have to stop eating fish, you have to stop eating groundnuts and you have to stop eating potatoes as well. So that was a little disturbing and along with the fact that her relative, maybe her uncle or auntie also told her that now no more sweets, sugars are completely banned for you. So this girl was more depressed that she's now off fish, she's off sugars. She was least bothered about the chemotherapy or surgical part about it. So friends, what importance does diet and nutrition have when it comes to treatment for cancer? There are two aspects of it. One aspect is cancer causative diet. Are there certain dietary factors which help or which the cancer cells to grow? or which actually make you more prone for developing cancer. And the other part is, what type of diet can prevent cancer or help you heal through the treatment of cancer faster? If you look at the first part, I think any diet which is rich in fats or rich in carbohydrates, obviously is going to make you more prone for developing cancers. Because if you consume lot of red meat, you have a risk of developing intestinal cancers. If you consume a lot of fats, that obviously gets translated into more of obesity, which again increases the risk of breast cancer or ovarian cancers also. If you take a diet which is not properly stored and infected with fungus, well, that was very common a few decades ago. That was one of the most common causes of liver cancers. A diet which is deficient in antioxidants. So if you do not have adequate fruits, if you do not have adequate green vegetables, if you do not have adequate proteins, that also is going to make you more prone for developing various cancers. What we have always heard, but unfortunately we are moving away from that terminology is balanced diet. There was a point of time that every family was focusing on having a balanced diet. Balanced diet means a diet which has got a adequate combination of proteins, fats, carbohydrates, minerals, essential vitamins as well. That included having two meals which covered all these aspects. From the Indian family perspective, it included roti, it included rice, it included green vegetables, it had dal, it had curds, it had sprouts, and at the same time, it had veggies as well. But now, in the era of fast food, it has been replaced by bread. We have so much of canned foods which we are consuming. So, it is actually depriving our body from the essential nutrients which we require. This is making us more prone for various cancers. In Japan, they have a culture of consuming smoked fish. But this smoked fish is actually making them more prone for developing esophageal and stomach cancers. In India, we have, with the diversity of the population and the society which we have, if you go to the Northeast, the incidence of gallbladder cancers is very, very high. That's again related to the dietary habits. So if you look at our dietary habits, we can actually predict what type of cancers are likely to be more common in those societies. 
Does sugar really feed cancer? In fact, the world is divided. On one side, we say that because of excess consumption of sugar or because of sugar intake, the lactic acidosis which occurs in the tumor milieu does not help the chemotherapeutic agents to kill the cancer cells faster. But again, is it really true? As I said, the world is divided about it. I usually advise my patients that cut down on your sugars. Cut down meaning restrict unnecessary intake of sweets and sugars. However, does not mean that you stop it completely. After the patient has gone through treatment of cancer, the nutritional requirements actually double up because your body needs to cope up not only with the day-to-day -day developments but also needs to cope up with the catabolism of cancer and the treatment which you are going through. So, you should consume plenty of liquids. Cut down on your carbohydrates. Don't take roti or uh, uh, rice. Take plenty of proteins instead of having multiple, uh, instead of having two wholesome meals, take multiple small meals. Is it really required to go through? It's like, you know, starvation. Well, I'm really surprised that there are patients who have been guided, I don't know by whom, who ask them to go through intermittent fasting, saying that when you do fast, at that time, you deprive your cancer cells of energy and the cancer cells do not grow fast. It, it, it is ridiculous. Cancer cells are going to grow irrespective whether you eat or you do not eat. They are going to go on binging on your body's reserves. So a patient needs to have adequate amount of nutritional value food items. And it is always better to discuss with your dietitian because in case you have some renal or a kidney related pathology or liver related pathology, then your diet has to be such which does not affect your kidneys or liver. If you are a diabetic, the diet changes. If you have some nerve related problems, then the diet has to be changed. In case your protein intake is very high in a patient who has got a lymphoma, then where your uric acid goes up, then you have to reduce your protein intake. So diet and nutritional is not a simple thing where your grandma can just tell you, okay, eat this, you don't eat this and it will be taken care of your cancer treatment. It is a science which has to be really properly guided, planned and that will help you to go through the treatment very, very effectively and reduce your chances of side effects and help your treatment which is going on either chemotherapy or immunotherapy or radiation to be taken care of. So diet or nutritional science as I would rightfully coin it, nutritional science is an integrative part of cancer treatment. At HCG Manota Cancer Center, we have a multidisciplinary team approach, meaning that a patient's treatment is decided not by one doctor. It is not only a surgeon who decides. It has to be a combination of a surgeon, medical oncologist, radiation oncologist, a psycho-oncologist, radiologist, pathologist, and equally important part is diet and physiotherapy as well. Because a healthy mind, a healthy body will face and take care of every assault which is there on it. Thank you very much. Take care of your diet.